I'm Carl Rosman. I'm the clarinet player with Musique Fabrique. I'd like to introduce you to one of my favourite sounds on the clarinet. In fact, not just one sound, it's a family of sounds, or to be technical about it, it's a category of multiphonics. If I had to give them a name, I'd call them small interval dyad multiphonics, but that's really just a technical way of saying that you can hear two notes and the notes are relatively close together. I suppose what attracts me to these multiphonics is that they do work against some of the cliches we might associate with multiphonics. I think if we've had a little bit of experience with multiphonics as listeners or players, we might think of them as things that are a bit harsh and a bit dissonant. You might use them at particularly intense moments in a piece. These multiphonics are very gentle and actually even though the notes in them, if you were to consider them as intervals abstractly on the page, you might think that these notes are dissonant. In fact, when they come out of the clarinet, the effect is gentle enough that they really, to my ear at least, they sound consonant. And what really interests me about that, musically speaking, is that you then have the possibility of the potential of the clarinet actually suggesting the harmony of the piece. So you can have a piece for clarinet that has its own harmonic language that's really unique to the clarinet and only actually possible on the clarinet. These sounds are actually quite easy to find if you're a clarinetist, or in fact whatever wind instrument you happen to be playing, I think. Certainly I've managed to find them on saxophone and on some historical single reed instruments. Multiphonics on a wind instrument basically work by confusing the tube into vibrating in two different registers at once. And because we've, we're dealing with small intervals here, it means we've got a short tube vibrating in the low register and a long tube vibrating in the next register up. And the practical way of making that work on a clarinet, you can start with a note that has a very short tube, for example this throat B-flat, and then just add fingers while the pitch goes down, and then at a, a certain moment the pitch will kick up into the second register. And it's that little point where the note kicks up. You play around that point and with a little bit of luck you'll be able to find one, two or even more multiphonics around that. I'll start with this throat B-flat and show you what I mean. So the most stable of those multiphonics was a nice major third, more or less. There are various other intervals you can get with these multiphonics, ranging from a semitone out to some really quite nice octaves, or nearly octaves. If you go further than that, then they start to lose that characteristic gentle blended sound that they have. I'll play a few of those intervals I mentioned. So as you can hear, they work best, they work most characteristically when you let one pitch establish itself and then let the other one drift in gradually over the top of that. There are two pieces that use these multiphonics particularly extensively. They were both written for me at around the same time, in the, the mid-noughties as we call them. One's by Rebecca Saunders, it's called Stirring Still. The other one's by Richard Barrett, it's called Flechtwerk. Stirring Still is a chamber work that was written for Musik for Brick. Flechtwerk is a piece for clarinet and piano that was written for me and the Australian pianist who lives in England, Mark Knoop. Uh, those scores are very good to look at if you're looking for charts of these, if you want to find out what they look like on paper, and if you want to find out what the fingerings are and uh, can't be bothered going through the process I just went through of looking for them all for yourself. If you're still curious about any of the things I've just shown you or said, I'm very easy to find. You can find me on www.carlrosman.com. Thanks for watching.